out. GPS it off, we put in the road. Dream team, touch the scene, everybody scream out. Wait up, turn up the lights from the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We don't carry good in on the arm. Mm, we don't carry good in on the arm. DJ, turn up the lights from the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We don't carry good in on the arm. Mm, we don't carry good in on the arm. Them not real, them are fake. Cut the grass low so we get to see this near them. Pass the cold lash, give me the ring. And a long time I don't tell you, say the whole of them are fake. Them can't hold me down, cause it's a party night. Good vibes in the air, don't have me feeling right. But about no hypocrite, but about no parasite. Them not show themselves for day, but them come out of mind. Them a vampire, I run from the light. Them just remember every day, them spirit no right. Them a combine in evil, too much higher time. Still not give up, can make my rest for the price. Jaja give me strength for you back up my enemies. Them full of hatred, them full of jealousy. I show to the thing we no fake, we no counterfeit. I know for them what they mean, what them full of shit. Be perfect, Israel never quit. Happy be heard in the fire, so me tell you this. I show to the thing we no fake, we no counterfeit. I know for them what they mean, what them full of shit. Yeah, walking this walk, it get hard at times. Going through it, feel like you gon' lose your mind. But staying grounded, stay humble, you gon' make it through. Through much tribulation, we gotta enter the king. Enduring captivity, trying to get away from these heathen. I'm trying to get my mind right, trying to change my ways. Trying to endure it to the end so I can see you one day. Trying to endure it to the end so I can see you one day. And you gotta hold on. You just gotta hold on. Gotta hold on. Hey, you just gotta hold on. So you gotta hold on to me. So you gotta hold on. Cause the window's almost here. You gotta hold on to me. So you gotta hold on. Cause the kingdom's almost here. I've been fighting for a while. Ever since I was a child, Project Baby running wild, just searching for some answers. When I needed pops, no, he was never there. And I'm home by myself, cause my mama didn't care. Bad, but just roaming through the streets, searching for some answers. Then the most high found me, thank you, Lord. Now my soul can be set free. Found out who I was, Israelite, who I was made to be. Walking this walk, it get tough at times, but staying positive, always motivated to make it. The most high wouldn't put me through it if he knew I can take it. So no matter the battle, I will push through. I might bend, but won't break, I might slip, then fall, or just me and Rosh seven times over it all, so I'ma build my cross, take another strike like Christ, they hated him, they hate you, so keep walking in light, and remember this, gotta hold on. Without a 
octopus in. Mama did her best but couldn't teach me how to be a man. I thank God for sending me a spirit. Could have been dead in iniquity. Now my life I'm trying to give it. Living sacrifice which is my reasonable service. Was a wicked nigga trying to find myself worthy. Used to grip grain and slide out on big rims. Learn the truth and now I turn into a new man. Holding on to the end is key. I let my life shine so my friends is I'm rocking. Sisters and brothers hold your head up. The kingdom is at hand for sure. Establish your hearts cause the judge standing at the door. Behold, we count them happy to endure because his eyes is on the righteous and his ears open to the poor. So hold on your time coming to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Gotta hold on. For them babies, gotta show an example. Yeah, they need to see a righteous daughter of Sarah. You was called to be the joy of the Lord, your strength. So you need to see a man appointed for you, and you appointed for him to serve in righteousness and endure to the end. Hold your head up and let your light shine. You might be going through it now, but continue to grind for the kingdom. The kingdom on its way. Don't worry about your family and what they say. Just keep grinding. And stay in the truth, an incorruptible crown is waiting for you because I ain't seen nor it heard what the most high got those that keep his word. Don't be the same, we all end do the same. He gives sight to the blind and strength to the lame. Gotta hold on. to the most high. Shalom, family, most high in Christ, bless. Let's stand up and face Jerusalem. Sisters, make sure your heads are covered. Brothers, make sure your heads are uncovered. All right? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Lord God, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus the Christ, to die on the cross for us, Lord God, that we may have a chance at eternal life through his blood, Lord God. We ask that you give us the strength to overcome our sins, Lord God, and overcome our thoughts, Lord God, and overcome the evil that is to come in these last days, Lord. Give us the spirit of understanding and wisdom, Lord, that we may be able to navigate through these evil times. And give us the spirit to follow counsel, Lord God, and follow the, the words of our leadership, Lord God, who you have placed the Holy Spirit upon, Lord God, to guide us and to strengthen us in these last days, Lord. Lord, we ask that if it be your will, Lord, you heal our bishops, our deacons, our captains, our officers, our soldiers, our brothers, our women and our children of Israel united in Christ, Lord God, and our brothers and sisters that are scattered abroad that are keeping thy commandments in sincerity and in truth, Lord God. We ask that you heal them quickly and speedily, Lord God. Send your healing angels amongst them, Lord God, to take away any sickness from their body, Lord God, if it be your will. Strengthen them, Lord God. Let not the enemy have power over them, Lord God, because we know that thou art a merciful God, Lord God. And thou art our God, Lord God. We ask that you strengthen us, Lord God. We're calling out to you right now, Lord, for strength and for healing, Lord God. And we ask that you continue to be with your service and walk with us daily, Lord. And send your angels amongst us to encamp around us, Lord God, as you say in the book of Psalms, Lord God. The angels encamp around those that fear the Lord. We ask for that protection, Lord God, as we go out into our everyday lives, Lord God. Protect those that may have had to take the COVID-19 vaccine, Lord God, for their jobs, Lord. Heal them quickly and speedily, Lord. Let no evil come unto them. Let not the device of the wicked harm any of our brothers or our sisters, Lord God. We plead now to you, Lord, right here, right now, Lord God. Every single day praying to you, Lord, for your strength, Lord God, and for your healing, Lord God, in these last days as the dragon is wroth with us, Lord God, because he know he has a, time, a short time left. In your name we pray. I'm on. All praise to the Most High. All praise. Shalom, family. Most High in Christ. Bless. Captain Gedaliah. Um, IUIC Jackson, Mississippi, to my right. I was a And we are going to go through a quick lesson today. It won't be super long. Um, going into 
uh, the lust of the eyes, right? The lust of the eyes. The reason we have, reason I'm going over this is because it's been heavy on my spirit lately. I've been seeing a lot of them. brothers and sisters get put out for fornication, for adultery. Just, I mean, and I understand a lot of people have that, that they, they still be played by the world and they still being played by their thoughts and, and they're allowing the thoughts to become their actions. And, and it's causing many of our brothers and sisters to fall away or to, to have themselves removed from the body because of that evil. And, and it is an evil spirit, right? And it can overcome you at any time. So hopefully if it be the Lord's will today, will be some exhortation to fight it, right? When we see the repercussions of it and we see the evils that come from it, right? Just, just like our forefather, King David. And we're going to deal with that today. So the lust of the eyes, uh, King David's sin, right? The lust of the eyes, King David's sin. But I want to start off in the book of Second Edris. Second Edges chapter 7, and I want you to start at verse uh, 56. Second Edges chapter 7, uh, verse 56. Yes, sir, this is the book of Second Edges chapter 6, 7, excuse me, in verse 56. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. So while we live and commit, and this is a heavy scripture. We can go all day just on this one scripture, but I'm going to touch on it briefly. It says, while we lived and committed iniquity, we consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. So the things that we're doing on the earth today, right, the things that our forefathers have done, the things that our brothers and our sisters in the world and even us ourselves that we may be walking and doing on a day-to-day -day basis, we never consider that we should suffer for it after death, right? This is why, um, uh, give me that in, in Amos 3 and 7. So the Bible says that we don't consider that the things that we're doing, we will suffer for it after death, meaning in that second judgment, when the, when the Lord judges our, our, the world and, and judges our people in particular, and we stand before the judgment seat, we don't, we don't realize that we will be judged for the things that we have done and that we are doing. And when you got that mindset to think about that, you're more reluctant to go after your sin because you know, like, okay, I have enough faith to understand that this Bible is true. And that there's a judgment for the evil that I'm involved in, and I must repent so the Lord will blot out my transgressions. Right? Read that for me. The book of Amos, chapter 3, and verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto the, his servants, the prophets. So the Lord revealed his secret to his servants, the prophets. He reveals secrets to us that there is a judgment. There is a judgment that is going to be involved or uh, that will be involved in after death if we don't make that first resurrection. If we don't make that first resurrection um, with Christ and reign with Christ, then we know when the, the second, when, when all the dead of the earth awake, uh, awaken and they have to stand before the judgment seat of the Most High God, that there's going to be a judgment even after you die. The Lord revealed that secret to us because a lot of us ain't thinking about that. When I was in the world, I remember uh, I was telling the brothers one day, when I was young, I used to always think, I was like, okay, well, I mean, I was telling my wife and kids this. I was talking to my, I think, yeah, I was talking to my oldest daughter, and I was like, baby girl, when, when I was a kid, I thought that if you broke God's commandments or if you sinned and God threw you in the lake of fire, that he wouldn't leave you there. Like, right? Like, God's not going to leave you. I used to ask my grandparents, they're like, if you, if you go to hell, it's like, okay, God will eventually see you burning, and he'll pull you out of there, Right? That's why I used to ask my grandfather. And he was like, huh? Well, no, I'm not going to say that. Once you're there, you're there. But I'm thinking in my mind, I can't be. Y'all say God merciful. Y'all say God love everybody. Y'all say God this, God that. So there's no way he'll leave me there. Then I read this, Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 23. Then as I got older, I read this. And I'm like, okay, this is serious. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 23. And it shall come to pass. That from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be abhorring unto all flesh. So when I read this, I was like, nah, that's, you ain't coming out of there. Once you go into that lake, that lake of fire, you're not coming out of there. You're going to stay there. You're, and you're, and you're, you're not going to, like, your spirit is not going to die. You, you're going to feel the fire. You're going to actually feel it. And you got to think about what kind of fire is this? 
that burns continually and all the time, constant fire, right? That that you can feel it for eternity. It, it never stops. It's a never-ending fire. It's got to be. That's the. That's to me. That seems sounds like the most painful, and terrible, terrible and dreadful judgment that you can ever possibly think of. So. Christianity has to leave our mind. The Lord has revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. We got to really, really think about what we're reading. Go back to 2nd Edges 7 and 56. So while we lived and committed iniquity, we're not thinking about the repercussions of our sins. We're just going on just like it's okay. We can't go like that. We can't think like that. It's not okay. It's, it's a judgment for it. Read. 2nd Edges chapter 7 and verse 56. But while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. So we don't think about the repercussions of it. That's the repercussions right there. To burn for forever. That's that's when you really just sit back and just meditate on it, that's some scary stuff. And we actually got an opportunity right now, as as being a child of Israel, a place of repentance has been opened unto us. God has sent his son to die for the nation of Israel so that we can have a chance at eternal life, and we're taking it for granted. I say we, I mean as a nation. I, I see, oftentimes I see brothers and sisters falling out for fornication, falling out for adultery, and you just really just sit back and think. It's like, oh, man, we let Satan overcome us for that one moment. And that's not saying that the pe that's not saying that anybody that has committed adultery or fornication that they're not going to get the kingdom, right? I mean, if they repent, they will. If they repent, they can be forgiven. A place of repentance has been opened unto them, right? But if they're going to just stay in it and they're just going to sit in it, they're going to be judged after death. They're going to go on and be judged after death. Can we get that in Matthew 12? Because I don't want nobody to think that, oh, he's saying if you commit adultery and get put out the body, then you're not going to get the kingdom. Because, no, it's, 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 it's not, you're not to be put out of the body forever. That's, that's not the goal. Remember, we're not in the business of destroying souls. We're in the business of restoring souls, right? But there's certain sins that you can't be amongst us if you're committing, but you can repent. Matthew 12 and 30. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Go ahead. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, mm -hmm. but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. All sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, but the blasphemy against the Holy Host in particular cannot be, you cannot be forgiven for that. What is the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost? That's when you say, hey, look, this ain't the truth. We not the Israelites. I don't believe the Bible anymore. I'm going to go back into something else, another doctrine or whatever the case may be. To hell with that Bible, I'm going to return back to my vomit. That's when you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You speak evil of the spirit that the Lord has given you of understanding. And we've seen it happen to actual brothers and sisters where they've been amongst us, mighty men, good sisters at one point, had the spirit on them, wanted to do the work of the Lord. Now they're back in pants, blind back in their head, relationship coaches, <laughs> relationship coaches. We're never married in the truth, but now you're in the world and you're a relationship coach. How that work? And had one successful marriage. You know what I'm just And he's like, damn, how did it happen? You know what I'm saying? What happened? They began to start to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. They began to speak against God's laws and want to go back into their sin. But any other, any other thing you can be forgiven for. So we're not saying that a brother or sister that get put out. Give me that in Second Edges. I mean, excuse me, Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 14. We're not saying that somebody that get that gets put out. Um they're doomed. No, we, not, we it ain't our job to judge. You know what I'm saying? The scripture said judge no man before the time. But, you know, in 1 Corinthians 5, it tells us not to eat with fornicators. So there is a time period where they have to be removed from the body. But if if it's the Lord's will and they're sincere and they're sorrowful to repentance, they will be restored. 2 Thessalonians 3, 14. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. You hear that? It's so they'll be ashamed. When they're, dis when they're separated from the body, and they're not able to congregate, and they're not able to be around their brothers and their sisters, and they're not able to keep the feast days with us, and so on and so forth, and they see the, the videos, or they see the pictures of us uh, congregating and enjoying ourselves in the spirit of the Lord, 
it's supposed to convict them. They're supposed to be ashamed. And through that shame, they're supposed to repent. That's, the, that's, that's why they're removed from the body. It's so that they'll be sorrowful unto repentance, but never to destroy them and leave them out forever. No, that's not, that's not the case. It's, we want to restore them. We want them to be restored. We don't want nobody not among, amongst us that believe. We got, we got too much work to do. We want the brothers and sisters here, all of us. But if you're in the midst of adultery or fornication or covetousness, or, or you're stealing or whatever the case may be, like the, scripture, the, the, the sins you read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, then you cannot be amongst us for that time. Hopefully, by you being removed, you get your spirit together. Keep reading. Yet, yeah. count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. It said, you hear that? It said, count him not as an enemy. You're not our enemy. We don't hate you, right? Because we was involved in a lot of sin that the Lord had mercy on us for. And if we did the same thing you did, we would be outside the body as well. No rank, all that. So we just trying to continue to walk straight. And when you get removed from the body, it's not to destroy you. It's to build you back up. It's so that you'll be sorrowful unto repentance. You'll be convicted for the things you've done. And you'll come back stronger. Right? That's a beautiful thing when, you, when, when a brother or sister get chastised or go through something. And then they bounce back and they come back stronger. And they take their judgment. Right? That's a strong spirit. That's a spirit God can deal with. You understand? But I don't want to put myself in the position in the first place to have to be removed, right? Just to be, just to be, just acknowledge my sin. You understand? It's just to realize, oh, dog, I shouldn't have did that, right? I, I want to be able to have these scriptures to go ahead and rely on from the beginning, right? So watch this. Um, go to 1 John chapter 2, and let's read verse 15. So the lust of the eyes, right? King David sin. So we went to Second Edges. I started off in Second Edges seven to 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 preface the class to put us in the mindset of what we're looking at. What kind of judgment is to come if we don't take this serious, right? First John chapter two, and let's read verse fifteen. Yes, sir. First John chapter two and verse fifteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. The love of the Father is not in him. Go ahead. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So it says, love not the world. Why does God say love not the world? Because the world is ruled by the spiritual demon Satan. And everything that he provides or everything that he gives you is against God. How do we know that? Give me James 4 and 4. I haven't read this one in a while. James 4, verse 4. The book of James, chapter 4, and verse 4. Yes, sir. The adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You hear that? It says, whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you're on the side of this world, if you, if you fight for homosexuality, you against God. If you fight for women liberation, women being able to wear pants, women being able to rule over their men, feminism, you against God. If you think it's okay to live in a lawless world where people can just fornicate and commit adultery with no repercussions, right, with no uh, judgment from the Lord, and you think that it's okay, you should just be able to do that. That's why it says you, adulter you adulterers, and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. If you're friends of this world, if you walk hand in hand with this world, you are God's enemy. You are against God. Because here it is, God trying to establish the nation of Israel to rule the planet Earth. But you trying to save all nations. God trying to get us to having strong families, husband and wife, faithful to one another so that they can set the proper example for their children. I tell you all the time, and when the scriptures tell you, first and foremost, if a woman steps out on her husband and cheats on him, right, according to the scripture, that man is not to take that woman back. Now, whether he does or not, that's on him, right? You can't sit amongst us, but that's on him. But the Bible says that if a woman is defiled, her husband is not to go back to her according to the scriptures. But then you say, well, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I believe that I can go and be who I want, be 
but have sex with another man, and then he should forgive me. Yeah, he should forgive you, but he not to take you back. He not to, to, to act like everything okay. You have been defiled. It's not okay for brothers to go out and sleep on their wives, cheat. It's not. Bring home STDs and so on and so forth. How you how we going to tell your wife to continue to have sex with you knowing that you've been out here playing uh, the whoremonger with several different women, unprotected? And these women in the world don't keep no commandments. How we gonna, how you going to come and say, hey, tell my wife she got to lay with me? I ain't telling her nothing. That ain't none of my business. I'm not telling her nothing. I'm not telling her to do that. You done been out here and you done slipped with all these sisters in the street and possibly bring an STD back to your wife, right, that can harm her something she can't get rid of, but you want me to tell her, to make her have sex with you and you've been out here doing that. I'm not going to do that. I, why would I do that? You understand? Why would, why, why would any judge say, yeah, 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 mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Go, you got to get to him, sis. Now, over time, as y'all men, y'all relationship, if the brother is, is remorseful and sincere and he gets tested, you understand, and he's clean, and over time she opened up her spirit to forgive her husband and he's brought back and he believes and that's the step they want to take. That's between them. I ain't getting in between husband and wife in that regard. I ain't getting between the the <laughs> the two private parts of, of grown-ups. I ain't getting between it. Right? But if you think that that's okay, that it's okay to step out on your rib, it's okay to, to lust after other men's wives, you are against God. Because God is not for that. Right? Go back to 1 John 2 and 15 again. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Go ahead. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the so world. So don't love this world, and don't love the things that are in this world. Go ahead. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't love the world and love God, right? You can't serve two masters. Could you get that for me? You know what I want? Matthew 6 and verse 24. Matthew 6, 24. You can't serve two masters. Read that for me. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters, but either he will hate the one and love the other. You hear that? He's going to hate the one and love the other, read. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Go ahead. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot, dis you cannot serve God and mammon, right? You can't serve the Father and serve this world and, and what this world has to offer. You cannot, right? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. So it says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. God can get in the way of your money. God can get in the way of your lust. Because his words say one thing and you know it. And when you believe it, you're convicted by it. But then all of a sudden, you're like, man, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe them scriptures. And you start going against God. You start serving mammon, right? You start serving the world. And you start to despise the Lord. You start to despise the Lord and his commandments. You start looking for ways to justify your sin within God's uh, Bible. Same thing Christians do. They search the Bible to try to find justification for their sin. They run to Paul to contradict Christ. Are you showing sure Paul was on the same level with Christ? They'll run back to the Old Testament and try to contradict Christ. I'm like, what? They'll go to Revelation to contradict Christ. They'll go to Christ to contradict Christ. Christ said, I ain't come to destroy the law or the prophets. I cannot to destroy it to fulfill. That's a see. See that fulfill? you like, that don't make no sense. He came not to destroy, but to fulfill. So if he didn't come to destroy it, that means it's still around. To fulfill it mean what? To fulfill the obligations within it that he was supposed to fulfill, meaning what? He kept it. They ain't thinking. Fulfill and destroy are not the same word. <sighs> but they'll, they'll, they'll look for justification, right? What about the man that was on the cross next to him, the malefactor? Did he not say that he was going to be in paradise with him and he was forgiven? That's a sin of prayer, brother. All right. Go ahead, read what you got. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 31. Yes, sir. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. So the fashion of this world going to pass away. It say use this world, don't abuse it. Use your gifts that you learn in your trade or in your schooling. Because we got brothers and sisters that are lawyers, doctors, the Israel ain't small no more. We got lawyers. We got doctors amongst us. We got um, brothers that that um, are carpenters, brothers that are um, electrical technicians, uh, um, chemical engineers, electrical engineers. We got brothers and sisters, IT experts. I mean, 
Brothers and sisters, they really got some gifts from the world, and they're using those gifts to help better the truth. And all praises for that. That's what the Bible's saying. Use this world, but don't abuse it. Because if you abuse it, there are things in this world that will pull you away from God. And one of those things is verse 16 in, in, first, in first John. First, first John, John 2, 16. First John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. So this is one of the things that will pull you from the Father. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. The lust of your eyes. The thing you see that you desire. Go ahead. And the pride of life. And the pride of life, read. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. Go ahead. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. You hear that? This world going to pass away, and the lust thereof. There will be no more evil on this earth. We understand it. When, when Christ returns and, and sits on the throne, right, it, the, the evil on the earth is going to be weeded out. It's going to be cleansed, and it's going to be a new earth in righteousness. When I say new earth, I don't, mean a brand, I don't mean a brand new planet. I mean a brand new rulership on the planet, a new government that's going to govern this earth with Jesus Christ being the king. And then eventually, after a thousand years, once he get everything established, he's going to pass it on to his father. You know ain't no evil going on when the father sits down. So he's saying right now, the, what, the world passeth away. That's the same thing that we read. The fashion of this world passeth away. It's the same thing Paul wrote in First. Uh, Corinthians 7. This world gonna pass away. Go ahead. And the lust thereof. Go ahead. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. But he that do the will of God gonna abide forever. Can you get that for me in Psalm 40 and 8? This, how, this is how you know you're living contrary to the world when you do the will of God. This is why people hate the Israelites because we teach the will of God. We teach contrary to the world and what the world has, has given our people. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 40, and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Mm -hmm. Yea, thy law is within my heart. He said, yea, thy law is within my heart. That's the will of God. It's God's laws. God's laws is his will. You understand? When you do his will, you are contrary to the world. The world passes away, but and the lust thereof. But he that do the will of the Father shall abide forever. You're going to be here forever. You're going to live you're not going to have to be afraid of that second judgment, that, that awaken, that uh, when the Lord wake us back up, you understand, for those that pass away and, and don't make the first resurrection, they get woke up and have to stand before the judgment seat. You ain't going to have to worry about that because you fought the world while you was living. You fought the world while you was on this earth. You kept God's commandments. You did the will of the Father, right? But them lusts in the eyes, which is what we're dealing with right now, it can cause you to go away. It mess with your head. Right? It mess with your head. Now watch this. Um, give me that real quick in um, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Uh, in verse 22. The book of Matthew chapter 6 in verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single... Thy whole body shall be full of light. So if you focused, if, if your spiritual eyes open and you focus, it says your whole body shall be filled full of light. What's the light? Could you give me that in Proverbs 6? What does it mean if your eye be single? If you focus, if you're enlightened and you focus on this truth, it says your whole body going to be full of light, meaning you're going you gonna to follow what you see, right? When I say what you see, the spiritual, from a spiritual aspect, you say, oh, damn, the Bible say don't do this. Make a covenant with my eyes. Oh, I can't look at her. Oh, I can't look at him. I can't lust after him. That's the spirit. The spirit that now your whole body just fall in line with the spirit. You start doing exactly what the scriptures say because of your mind, but because you discipline your eyes. It's all connected. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Yes, sir. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. And the laws of God is light. Read. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So go back to Matthew uh, 6, 22. So the law is God's commandments. The law is light. It helps you see clearly. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thine whole body shall be full of light. So if your spiritual eye is open and it's focused, it's single, it's focused on, the, on these commandments, it's focused on the light, the laws of God, it say you're going to be, it say you're going to be, your whole body going to be full of light. You're going to begin to do what you're learning. You're going to begin to go against your flesh 
the lust of your eyes. You're going to fight that thing because your eye is single. You focus, your spiritual eyes focus on keeping these commandments. You are not letting anything cause you to fall to the left or to the right. That's a beautiful thing right there. If we all able to accomplish that, that is a beautiful thing. But we understand that the Bible tells us in Mark 7, 21, if you could read that for me, what's in the hearts of men. It's a fight. It is a fight. It is a battle within between your ears. Is a battle every single day from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. That's why John said, don't go after the world because there's a lot of evil in the world. The lust of the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is in the world. It's going to pass away, but right now we're fighting it. It's in the world. Read what you got. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So it said, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Out of your mind, evil is here. Between your ears is evil here. You understand? Go ahead. Adulteries. Adultery start here. Nobody just commits adultery just because. It's premeditated. It's thought about. It's planned. And even if you say, well, it just happened, I just, it's, it's very rare. Unless you put your, and even then you put yourself in a situation, but it's very rare for a woman to just say, hey, let's go have sex. You don't know her, just random, just come to you. Or a man come to you randomly and just say, hey, let's do it. Let's go do it right now. He don't know you. You don't know him. It's planned. Satan pick at you. He have you see her or have you see him, and then you, I ain't looking at her. The next time you come in there, come in that store, you see him again. Hey, how you doing? So, 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 oh, what's your name? My name is so, so, oh, my name. Okay, all right. Nice to meet you. Right? All right, you have a good day now. Take care of yourself. And then months go by. They still work there. You see him all the time. Hey, you, you believe the Bible? <laughs> That's good what you start doing, because especially when you're in the truth, you try to use the fact that you know scriptures to try to see if they might, you know, latch on because you like them and you really want to be with them, right? You really want to have sex with them, so you'll use the Bible as, oh, hey, do you believe in the Bible? You know we Israelites? We God's people. We God's people. And she looking like, really? Wow, I didn't know that. That's some really enlightening information. Yeah, well, let's, buy, let's, let's, let's go out for coffee. Let's go to lunch. Let's, let's talk about this. I would like to light li you a little bit more. Matter of fact, hey, you know what? I mean, <laughs> If you're comfortable with it, I, I, I can actually cook. You can come over to the house. We can go over scriptures. I can show you a little bit, show you about what we're about. And then before you know it, y'all in each other's bed. You in her bed or vice versa, she in your bed or, or vice versa, whichever way you want to flip it. The woman's in the man's bed, whatever the case. And it started off with you saw him and you never corrected a thought. Your eye wasn't single. You weren't focused on the most high. You weren't focused on the spirit, the light. So you catch yourself just going off straight. That all start right here, in between your, I keep saying in between your ears, right here. This, this right here, it's got evil in it. We have to constantly meditate on, the God, on God's laws to fight this thing. Read again. Mark 7, 21. Mm -hmm. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Adultery. Adultery start in your mind. Fornication. Fornication start in your mind. Murders. Murder starts in your mind. Pre murder is premeditated. You think about it. You want to do it. It ain't accidental. Go ahead. Thefts. Thefts is premeditated. You think about it. You look at it and say, I want that. I covet that. I'm going to take that. Go ahead. Covetousness. Read. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Lasciviousness. That's evil, lustful desires. Go ahead. And evil eye. A hatred towards your brother. Blasphemy. Pride. Mm. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. These things defile us. They make us defiled, and they're all in our brains. We got to fight it every day. It's right here, and it's a spiritual thing. You got to fight this thing all the time. You got to constantly have your eyes single, focus on the commandments of God, because if not, you'll sway from the right to the left constantly. You'll never stay on that straight and that narrow path. You'll constantly fall to the left and fall to the right every single day. And you'll be like, ah, I keep catching myself in these situations because your eye ain't single. You're not focused. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of eyes in particular is causing you to go left or right. Go back to Matthew 6, read verse uh, 22 and 23 together. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Mm -hmm. But if thine eye be evil. But if your eye be evil, go ahead. Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. You hear this? If your eye be evil, your whole body shall be full of darkness. What does that mean? That means if you focus on the sin that's, in your, that's on your mind and you allowing that to control you, when you see her, you're going to go after it. 
When you see him, you're going to go after him because guess what? You've been meditating on evil. You've been premeditating on evil the whole night. He said, when I see her tomorrow, this tomorrow going to be the day. I'm going to get a number. When I see him tomorrow, it's going to be the day where I let him know that I like him. And then the rest is history because it's only a matter of time before you fall because your brain is on evil. Your eye ain't single. You're not focused on the light. You focus on darkness. Go ahead. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? It said the light that be in you is darkness. How great is that darkness? You've allowed, you've allowed yourself to be corrupted. You've allowed those things that Christ told us was in all men, in, in the mind, that defiles you. You've allowed, allowed it to just completely just go. And now you, because I give you an example. There are many cases of infidelity that turn to murder. Many cases of infidelity that turn to covetousness. Actually, infidelity is covetousness. You wanted something that wasn't yours. You go after it, right? And then what happened? Like, oh, man, I got a, my husband got an insurance policy. And the dude you with, like, word? How much? $2 million. $2 million? Hmm. You don't love that dude anyway, right? No, I don't love him. I got a friend that can take him out. I got a friend that can put him to death. So now you're thinking about it like, I really want to be with him. I'm tired of this Negro anyway, and I can get $2 million out of it, and you gone. That's what happened with the basketball player, Lorenzen, um, it was Lorenzen Wright? I forgot his name. But it's a, I, think that, I think that's it. I think that's it. Lorenzen Wright, he was, um, and I could be wrong. Forgive me if I said his name wrong, because I don't want um, his family to be watching and be offended. Um, he's a basketball player. He's from Memphis, and his wife, we showed her on Escape Plantation a few weeks ago on the Fatal Attraction um, episode. He, um, he had an insurance policy of a million dollars. His wife, he and his wife broke up or whatever happened for infidelity or whatever. She had hatred toward the brother, and she got conspired with her cousin and her pastor, a deacon boyfriend, to kill him for the insurance money, covetousness, right? That's the lust of the eye. That's why I say, listen, if the light, if the if if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? It's an evil that comes from that. That's why we have to stay focused on these commandments. Go back to Second Edges uh, seven and fifty seven now. Second Edges seven and fifty seven. Book of Second Edges, chapter seven, in verse fifty seven. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle. Which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Read. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. Mm -hmm. But this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. Choose thee life that thou mayest live. So you got life and death set before you every single day. Death is sin. Death is that darkness. Right? Life is that light. That singleness of the eye, that light that the Most High God is trying to get us to convert our minds to go after, to fight those uh, thoughts that Christ said is within man, that's within the heart of man, to fight it. Because you can't fight it. The, the, God, the Bible gives you the tools. That's why I said this is the condition of the battle. It's a fight. It's a war. It's a war going on in your mind every single day. You're warring with yourself. That's the biggest fight in this truth. The pork ain't that hard. Catfish, man. Eh. Even the dress code. Not that once you get over those things, it's kind of like, okay, now what? I'm ready for the fight. And then it started to be eternal. The longer you in this truth, you say, wow, I deal with pride. I deal with covetousness. I have a lying spirit. I have an adulterous mindset. I, I have a wicked eye. I have hatred. Pride, all these things, foolishness, lascivious. And you're like, wow, I never knew this about me. Then the Lord reveal you to yourself and you say, man, that was a prideful thing that I did. That was a hateful thing that I did. Let me, let me make amends with my brother. So God started to reveal things to you about yourself. Because you ain't over. Sister told me one time, well, the only thing I deal with is cigarettes. I said, sister, you are already defeated when you think that way. Oh, that's the only thing I deal with. No, it ain't. Because did we know you smoke cigarettes? No. Why well, didn't we know? Did you not tell us? So you were doing something that we didn't know about, and you continued in it. Were you being a liar, sis? Yes. I said, so not only did you smoke cigarettes, you lied, and you continued to lie. She said, yeah. I said, so that's not the only thing you deal with. Cigarettes is the thing that is on the surface, but internally there's more. Guess what? Have you ever bought cigarettes? Have you ever been late 
getting your cigarettes and had to go rush and try to buy it on Friday before sundown? And did the sun go down on you as you buying them cigarettes? So you broke the Sabbath for them cigarettes too. You see what I'm saying? You, you told your family members, hey, you need to stop sinning as you're smoking the cigarettes. So were you a hypocrite to them? Yeah. I said, sis, you got a lot of stuff you're dealing with right now. Cigarettes is just a thing that you see on the surface. Like, oh, that's all I deal with. No, you do with a lot of things. If you're not disciplined enough to stop putting toxins in your body that kills you, you ain't going to be disciplined enough to not go after that attractive man when he want to have sex with you. You're not. You're going to do it. You're going to find yourself falling into it. Why? Because you allowed that one thing. You had that stumbling block. You didn't fight. You didn't realize Satan had an advantage over you. You didn't even see it. Right? Give me that real quick. And um, it was just on my brain. It left me. Oh, Ephesians. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. So the lust of the eyes, things you see and you want to go after, whether it's women, men, in some cases with, with other men, that, you know, we got to talk about that stuff because it's real. Homosexuality is real. Some of our people are plagued by it. They're, they're battling, a, battling it. If you're a woman, you want to be with a woman. A man, you want to be with a man. That's a battle. It's a fight in your mind. You got to fight it. You a mighty man in the Lord now. Lord, has, you have repented from that sin. Put that thing away. Put that, that old man away. Same thing with the sisters. If you're dealing with that lust of homosexuality, fight that thing. Put, put it to the side. You know it ain't number evil that's coming from that. Right? A judgment coming from that. Read what you, want. Read what you got in Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Yes, sir. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It said be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God. And put on the whole armor of God, meaning this Bible, from front to back. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because Satan got tricks, but we're not ignorant of his tricks. They're in the Bible. The Bible tell you about Satan's tricks. Right? But like Bishop has always said, Satan is an ancient demon, an old demon. And he's very, like Bishop say, patient, methodical. He's been around much longer than you. He know you better than you. He know what's in you better than you know what's in you. And what is he doing? He's just ding, 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 just chipping away at that, at that rock before he can crack the foundation and the whole house crumble. That's what he's doing. He just ding. You don't even realize you get ding, ding, just like that. Or if, if in, the, in, the, in the sake of armor, right, he just... Hitting at that armor. He know you, this, this part of your breastplate of your armor, it may be uh, fornication or adultery, right? And he just chipping away at it until he find a way, to, so he find a hole in that armor, a chink in that armor, and he can throw a dart right there, the fiery dart to the wicked, he, and that dart hits you. Same way on this side. This side may be that lying spirit. You battling against lying. You catch yourself lying about all kind of stuff. So he said, okay, ting, 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 just keep on chipping away at that piece of your armor because you're not constantly strengthening your armor. You're not constantly putting on the whole armor of God, right? So to protect yourself. Go ahead. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So there's spiritual wickedness in high places, the powers that be. Satan, Satan and his children rule this planet. And what are they doing? They putting stuff out for your children to see, for you to see, to corrupt your mind every single day. Every single day you wake up and you watch television or you go on social media, it is something there to pull you away from God. Satan got his angels working 24-7. They don't never stop working. You got some cities like Vegas, New York. They say the cities that never sleep. It's always some wickedness to get into. It don't matter what. It's always food. Like, think about it. These cities... Bruh, they be selling food to 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. You can go you can go and fulfill your lust. Man, I'm hungry. I want some Waffle House. No, you don't need that, that type of morning. That type of morning. Waffles and hash browns and eggs and, for some people, pork, bacon. You understand? All this stuff, you just pile it on your plate. Then you eat it 2, 3 in the morning. You wonder, man, I can't lose no weight. I can't never lose no weight. Because Satan always got things for you out here to you for you to go after. That's why the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Satan got tricks. Satan got weapons to try to destroy you. And they coming from spiritual wickedness in high places. Take heed. Don't be sleep. Don't sleep on this. Because if you sleep, that means that, that, that light in you is darkness. Your, your eye is not single. Your eye, your spiritual eye ain't focused. 
Right? Keep reading. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Meaning when your trial comes, if there's an evil day that's going to come, you battling with that lust, it's going to be a day that's going to come where that lust is going to, you're going to have an opportunity to fulfill it. You have an opportunity to have sex with her. You gonna have an opportunity to have sex with him. You gonna have an opportunity to hit that lick by illegal means. Finally, this is what I've been waiting on to get that bread, and then bam, that opportunity come up and you hit, you follow it, and it causes you to fall into type of sin. Something that gonna cause you to be in prison for the rest of your life. And he said, "How I get here?" There's many brothers and sisters in prison right now. They're like they thinking to themselves, like, "All oh, because I wanted that bread. All oh, because I wanted that money." And they fall into something that they can't get out of because the evil day is coming. That's why we put on the whole armor of God. So when that evil day do come, we able to fight. We able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Meaning what? We done armored ourselves for this day. That's what God telling us to do. Armor yourself. Prepare yourself for battle. Right? How do we know? Give me that in um, 1 Peter 2 and 11. How do we know? Why, why do I say armor? Why do I say war? Because remember, we read earlier in Edris, this is the condition of the battle that all men on the earth must fight. Read that, 1 Peter 2 and 11. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. You hear that? It war against your soul. Your soul know to do right. You done learn the scriptures. You know what the Bible says. You know God say, don't do this, don't do that. But that lust... That fleshly lust, this flesh that we in, this weak flesh that we in, it war against your soul. Every day it's warring against your soul. Just even from your eyesight, the things you see, you're like, man, God, oh, why? Every, every day it's like I'm, I'm, I'm fighting against myself. Guess what? That's the condition of the battle. That all men on the earth must fight. It's a fight for us all every single day, and we got to fight it. And we got to overcome so we can be saved, so we can get the kingdom that is, is, was destined for us, the children of Israel. It was destined for us. It's ours. That's why Christ said it's within you. It's our kingdom. It was already prepared for us. We just got to fight to achieve it. We got to fight to get it. That's in 2nd Edges 7 where it talks about uh, that, that narrow path, that one path between them both, the fire and water on each side. You got to pass that to reach your inheritance. Our forefather Adam sinned. Our father... Adam sinned. And when Adam sinned, we all fall because of that. Now we all got to fight to get back into that paradise. It ain't coming easy no more. We got to fight ourselves. And the biggest fight is within your brain, right here, your mind, right here, fighting this lust inside here every single day. And the Bible says, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against your soul. Go back to Ephesians 6. It's a, it's a fight. Ephesians 6 and um, 14 now. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. It's having your loins girt about with truth. What is that truth? Can you give me that? What are you girding yourselves up with? What are you armoring yourselves up with? Your loins girt about with truth. Go so, ahead. Psalm chapter 119 and verse 142. Go ahead. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. God's laws is the truth. Go back to Ephesians. Let's put, let's put it together precept upon precept. Let's, let's show them the mystery that God is showing through our forefather Paul because Christians will read this and they have no understanding. They want to talk about the spiritual demon Satan is in the air fighting with angels. And No, that's no. Y'all trying to be too deep. Paul telling you it's a war in your mind. You fighting against your sin that's going to stop you from getting the kingdom of heaven. But since they deny God's laws, they can't see that. But we see that. The Lord has revealed it to his servants, the prophet. He's showing us, gird yourself up with truth. Put these laws on your mind. Meditate in these laws. Upload God's laws as king. I said king. Now here's the king. Deacon um, Laba could tell you, upload God's law. Put them laws on your brain. That's your, war, that's your war tactic. That's your fight. That's your battle plan. Go ahead. Read it again. Ephesians 6, 14. Mm -hmm. Stand therefore. Having your loins go about with truth. It ain't going to be easy. That's why you're putting on armor. Because you know when I step outside these doors, or even, even before I step outside these doors, when I wake up in the morning, if I don't focus my mind to right, if I don't get some laws in me, upload some laws in me when I first get up in the morning, guess what? I'm going to be fighting Satan all day with no armor. Here it is. I hadn't girded myself. So now when I walk outside the doors, 
Satan having his way with me. Satan whooping me. Right? Go ahead. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. It said put on the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. What is righteousness? You know what I want? Deuteronomy 6.25. What is righteousness? What is the righteousness that we're supposed to be putting on? What is that breastplate of righteousness? Let's see. Deuteronomy 6.25. Could the, you read it? Yes, sir. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness mm. if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. You see that? Righteousness is to observe God's commandments. Guess what? Your, your pastor been telling you you righteous for paying your tithe money. Show me in the Bible where it tells you, especially in the, show me tithe in the New Testament other than one time in the book of Luke or and, and, in the, and in the book of Matthew, the 23rd chapter, where it talk about how the Pharisees tithe and, and how uh, the, the, I think it's Luke, if I am mistaken, it's Luke 17, where it talk about how the, the, the Pharisee would, would uh, try to down the other man because he didn't tithe as much as he did. But show me, and in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, my mind, you know, it'd be probably my mind. I'll, I think it's three or four times you read tithe in the New Testament, and none of them tell you to give it to your pastor. It was always meant for the Levitical priest. Oh, but didn't Christ do away with the Levitical priest? All pastors say, yes, he did. Show enough, brother. Amen. <laughs> well, why are you taking tithes? You understand? <laughs> it's a war in your mind, right? Go back. So righteousness is you keeping God's commandments. Go back to Ephesians 6, 14. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Go ahead. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Read. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It said having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You preparing yourself for the, for the, 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 the coming of your uh, Savior, Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. And he's going to bring peace to this earth. You understand? Go ahead. Above, After war. Go ahead. Above all, taking the shield of faith. You got to have some faith. You fighting your sin because you got faith that if you do so, you're going to reach the kingdom. That's why you fight. That's what the battle is. You ain't, because your sin is pleasurable to you. Could you get that for me, to me, for me in um, uh, Hebrews 10 and verse 25? The pleasures of sin. The pleasures of sin for a season. Hebrews 10, 24, I mean, 25, 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not oh, no, excuse me, 11. My bad, I'm sorry. 11, 25. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. This is talking about Moses. Read 24 for me. Verse 24. By faith. By what? By faith. By faith. Read. Moses, when he was come to years, Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Wait a minute. Moses denied the world. Because at that time, it was um, it was the it, it was the thing to do to be a part of the Egyptian army, to be a part of the Egyptian royalty at that time. They were the greatest kingdom on the planet Earth at the time. So you got to think about it. Moses is in the midst of the greatest kingdom on the planet Earth, and he grew up as Pharaoh's grandson. Moses had power amongst the Egyptians, man. That thing was, it was glorious at that time to be in that position. Just like now, some of these brothers and sisters may be senators or congressmen, presidents, making a million dollars a year, two million dollars a year, insurance, taking care of the rest of their life in government to uphold the American system. Some of them may be, have that type of pleasure, being the CIA, the FBI, and being able to make a lot of money, right? But at the same time, going against God, going against their brothers and sisters. So it said he... He'd rather suffer affliction. Get that for me? Verse 25 now. Verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. This brother said, it said that he chose rather to suffer affliction with the, the people of God. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Than to remain in sin, enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because sin is pleasurable to you. Go back to where I had you at in Ephesians 6 and 16 now. Go ahead. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Mm. wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You hear that? The shield of faith. You shield yourself with the faith in this Bible that, hey, Christ coming to redeem me from my enemies. So guess what? When Satan throw these darts, bam, I got a shield right there. Nope, not you, not me, Satan. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to go back into the world to fulfill my lust so that I'll lose out on my chance at eternal life, that I'll lose out on my chance of walking with Christ. 
You understand? To be entered into the kingdom of heaven. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to go down with you. But you got so much faith. You build your faith up. You understand, like, look, I keep, this is what's wrong with Christianity. They have no faith. They have no faith in God's commandments. This is why Christians get vaccinated. This is why Christians go to church and get their tithes to their past. Everything they come on CNN, they follow it. They, they have politics. They vote. Because they don't have no faith in God. They don't have no faith in the commandments that the commandments can actually shield them from the evil to come. They have no faith in that whatsoever. But you got it. You got the faith. You understand. Yo, I got to keep these commandments. That's my shield. They don't even know Satan throwing darts at them. I look at these Christians. And I be listening to them, my brothers and sisters in the Christian church, and they'll die for that religion. They'll die for it. They'll, 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 they'll live a hard life, a life full of disease and anguish and pain and sorrow and depression just so they won't have to keep God's laws. They'll go in debt. They'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars over a 40 or 50-year period. I think we said um, if your grandmother gives $100 a week, 52 weeks of the year for 40 years, that's 200000 That's over $200,000. And that's just one of your grandmothers. That ain't including your fathers, your uncles, your cousins, your brothers, all our family members. The Christian church then gained $420 billion. $420 billion over the last 40 years. And they got nothing for the black community because they faith is in that dollar. They faith is in that pastor. They faith ain't in God's commandments. They don't have no faith. Because your faith lies is when you can commit adultery and you say, no, I ain't doing it. Why you ain't doing it? She fine. Man, because I know if I do that, it's going to cause me to possibly not get the kingdom of heaven. Christ could return while I'm in that thing. I could be in it and Christ return and I'm done. I'm finished. Over. So I got enough faith to understand that if I do that, there's a judgment behind it. I have faith in the Lord. So when Satan throw them fiery darts, I'm blocking that thing. I'm, I'm a tumbo in this junk. You understand? Every time that thing comes towards me, I'm putting up that shield for it. That's what God's telling us we got to do, brothers and sisters. I know it's tough, but you got to do it. You got God's laws. Give me that in 2 uh, Corinthians. What Paul said, what Christ told Paul, my grace is sufficient. Read that for me. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You got power on you. You think you're weak because you feel yourself uh, battling. You're not weak when you're battling. You're fighting. You're not weak. You're fighting right now. But in your mind, you're saying, I'm weak. No, you power, you more, you're stronger when you fight your sin than when you give in to it. When you give in to your sin, that's when you're done. That's when Satan got you, he got his claws around you, literally. And you don't know it. He's standing right over there. He's standing right here, right there. He got, he got demons everywhere, and they standing right around you. Then you're on the southern side, you got the spirit of the Lord. You got angels right there in your ear, like, remember the commandment. Don't forget the commandment. Remember Christ said, don't do that. Don't do that. And your mind fighting this Satan over here, like, man, the hell with that. Go on, get it in. Do your thing. You can do it. That's that, that's that thorn in the flesh. That, that, the, uh, what it say in um, read verse 7 for me. I'm sorry. Verse 7, at least, at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. So you got all this wisdom. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. And you got a thorn in your flesh. You can't get it out. It's just piercing you right over here on the side. Go ahead. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, mm. lest I should be exalted above measure. You hear that? It said the messenger of Satan. So when I said what I said about Satan having his angels right around, or Satan having his uh, devices right there, like, yeah, you know what I mean? In your ear, on social media, on television, at your job, when you go to Walmart, when you go here, when you go to Lowe's, when you go to Sam Club, everywhere you go, Satan got devices constantly pulling at you, the billboard as you pass it down, passing by, talking about homosexuality, and you deal with that spirit. Here you go, this billboard over here telling you about abortions. So you thinking, oh man, if I do get pregnant by him, I can kill the baby. You understand? You, this, these are the things that's around you, Satan devices around you all the time, trying to constantly pull you in. You got that one demon that always bother you, and it, and it may be lust, and it's a thorn in your flesh. Paul went through the same thing. He's telling you, Christ told him, say, look, I can't take it away. I'm not going to take it away because I didn't gave you grace. So you got power. Don't deny your power. Your power is what? These laws, these commandments right here. 
This your power, the wisdom of God, which is Christ. He's the wisdom of God. He's the power of God. That's why our power a lot. We got the spirit of Christ. That's how we fight. That's how we push. Go back to Ephesians 6 and 16. Ephesians 6, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Read. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You can quench his darts. He throw them darts at you. They quench by your shield. I love that picture. You know that picture that we got where it's like the Bible and the Apocrypha and the brothers got it up and all the darts from the wicked is hitting it? I was like, man, that's a powerful picture. Who thought of that? Brothers is, is masterful in, 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 in how they express themselves through art. Satan throwing them darts, and the Bible catch it. Like, nope. It's a spiritual war. Go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation mm. and the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit. Read. Which is the word of God. Amen. All praises. It's the word of God. That's your sword. That's how you fight back. Satan, you can tell Satan that. So sing, sing. And he looking like, yeah, hey, let me go on flee, man. This dude, this, this nigga is ill. <laughs> It's real out here. I thought I, I thought it was going to be a cakewalk. I'll be back, though. I'm going to come a different way next time, but I say I can't get you that way. You know he coming back. you like, okay, when you come back, I got my sword right here. I'm girded up. I'm ready for the battle. But you take your helmet off, and you pull off your armor, and you take off your your your, uh, your shin pads, and you take off your your um, your, your um, guard that you got a, a, around your abdomen area, because that's what the loins is, your abdomen area. You take that off and say, say yep, here you go. He took it off. Let's go. You're not med He's not meditating. Look, he ain't meditating on the scriptures. Look at him. And Satan creep on back in. Now watch this. Go to uh, 2 Samuel. We almost done. 2 Samuel chapter 10. Lust of the eyes. We talk about King David sin, right? Um, let's go to 2 Samuel. Uh, start at 11. 2 Samuel 11. And let's read verse 1. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, mm. that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. So David, David's men are at war. It's war time. You understand? And that's where his focus is. But let's see what happens. Let's see what happens next. So he's focused at war, but he stayed back in Jerusalem. He sent his men. David done battled many years, right? He can send his men now. He can build these men up. Joab, he can trust this brother. Watch this. Go ahead. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. You see this? His men are at war. He get up out of the bed. He stretched. Ah, man. Man, Israel, man, we on point, man. We whooping everybody. Hey, give me the report for the day. Or oh, 100,000 dead? Okay, yeah, good. Tell Joe and them, hold it down. All right, I'm going to go out here and walk on the porch real quick. Who is, who is that right there? Damn. She look good. She bathing too? She fine. Go ahead. And David sent and inquired after the woman. Say, hey, go, hey, go find out who that woman is that was on that building right over there taking a bath. Go ahead. Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, mm. the wife of Uriah the Hittite? He said, wait a minute. And one said, oh, that's Bathsheba. That's the daughter of Eliam. That's the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Yeah, that's his wife. Go ahead. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. Damn. But now, hold up now. Hold up. Because she didn't just lay with him just because he was the king. That's one part of it. But David, had to, you remember, we have to fill in the gaps here. The Bible don't give us uh, exactly what happened. So you have to use your imagination. David probably talked to her. You know, he pulled up and said, sister, how you doing? Yeah, you know, I, was, I saw you up there, you know, bathing from the top of the, bed, uh, the thing. You know what I'm saying? You're very beautiful. Everybody else told you you was beautiful. She blushing. <laughs> king David. And then David wasn't, wasn't ugly. He wasn't busted. He's the king. You understand? He flying his royal apparel. She looking like, ooh, woo. You know what I can do if I were to get with him? And then he looking like, man, she bad. I know she married. I heard, I heard you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boss, remember I told you that's that's your right to hit tight white. Man, I heard you, man. You gotta remind me of that man. Go on, get up out of here. Let me talk to her by myself. And what'd he do? He had sex with her. 
Now, we just read that he was supposed to be in a warrior mind frame. His men are at war fighting. But because he saw this woman, this beautiful woman, he forgot the laws of God. Just like that. He forgot God's laws about adultery. And he went after his sin. He went right on and went after his sin. Go ahead. For she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. So he had sex with her and sent her home, her husband's home. Go ahead. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Whoa. <laughs> this is some real stuff because this happened in the black community all the time. You go sleep with somebody you don't have no business sleeping with, and you end up pregnant. Or you go sleep with somebody you ain't got no sleep with, brothers, and she end up pregnant. And what you say? Shoot, I got about 500 on it. That, was, that, that happened in the black community all the time. Shoot, man, I can't have no baby right now, man. Ooh. You sure it mine? Damn, you sure it ain't your hub? Man, she's like, no, nah, I was just purified from my uncleanness. You the last person I've been with. My husband at war right now, so you got to be the father. That means they was at war for a while because they ain't had no pregnancy test back then. It took a little while to find out she was pregnant. Mr. Period, throwing up morning sickness. She's like, oh, man, my husband been gone for three months. Ain't no way. This, this Davis, he the only one I've been with. Go ahead. And David sent to Joab, saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when the Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. So he does, first of all, he called a brother knowing that he doesn't slept with his wife, right? So the lust of the eyes, he, he completely in it now. He done fell into the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. He saw what he wanted. He took it, right? And it says that then he called the husband of that woman to him, just say, hey, how Joab doing out there? No, he don't give a damn about how Joab doing. He called that brother out of war because he wanted that brother to go down and have sex with his wife so he could say that that was his child and not David. He wanted to disguise it. So David was going to have this man raise David's son and say that that was his. Think about it. I, I had sex with my best friend's wife, got her pregnant, and I'm going to have him raise the child as if it's his. I'm knowing this whole time that child mine. This is what King David was ready to do. So just to hide his sin. That's the lust of the eye. What led to this? The lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes led to this. Go ahead. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didn't thou not go down unto thine house? So David like, why you didn't go home? You're right, and got home, got me home. Well, you know how you see your boy. Hey, man. Shoot. Hey, Salon. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't seen you in a minute, man. We've been at war, man. Hey, man, Joe ass man, out there tearing their ass up, man. It's real out there, man. Yeah, man. Hey, you got something to drink? You got some? Man, hey, all right, man. Shoot, man. Forget my wife. I'll get to her when I get to her. Hey, man, like I was saying, yeah, hey, the king got that meat. Man, say he sent after him a whole mess of meat, so he got a feast there. So he's like, man, shoot, man. The king just hooked me up with lamb, all kind of stuff, bro. You trying to? You bring the drink? I got the lamb. Let's get it in. They done turned up. This brother done fell asleep. <laughs> the servant said, hey, you know, Joe Ab didn't, I mean, um, you're right, didn't leave last night. He didn't leave. Tell his name. <laughs> hey, man, didn't you, didn't you just come back from war? Yeah, I just came back from war, King. Why, why, why you ain't go home? You supposed to go home. You come back from war, you supposed to go home. Go see your wife, man. What are you doing? Like, he just cares so much about the brother's wife now. You know it's something up. Now, watch this. Keep it. And Uriah, verse 11, and Uriah said unto David, the ark and Israel mm. and Judah abide in tents. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? <laughs> go ahead. As thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. I know that as he was saying this, King David's stomach had to drop. Like, oh, God. He owned us. He owned me. That what he, I, I know that's what he had to be thinking because Uriah just put him in the mindset that he should have originally been in. He said, listen, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Why would I go home and lay with my wife and eat and drink with her? And it's war going on. 
I was hoping you would send me back out to war. Why am I even here? I ain't got time to go lay with my wife. I need to be for my people. They had to cut David. They had to cut him. This is how you know it cut him. Go ahead. And David said to Uriah, tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day mm -hmm. and tomorrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. Mm, he got him drunk. That's sin. He got him. He put him in sin. Go ahead. And at even, he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. So he done got drunk. He didn't go home again. He was hoping that if he'd give him a little liquor in him, he might get, you know, want to fulfill his lust and say, so I'm going to go lay with my wife. I'm going to holler at y'all. You know how it is. You be like, hey, man, shoot. Shoot it by one, bro. I'm going to go on Shalom, y'all, brothers. I'm out. You know, wife at the crib. I'm going to go get it in. That's lawful in the eyes of the Most High. But he done got drunk and then fell asleep again. Didn't go home. I, this, this, you, this how you know this of the Lord to reveal his sin. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Damn. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he might be smitten and die. Wow. The desperation done kicked in. He ain't going to go down to his house and lay with us. So the only way I'm going to, I got to send him back to war. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a letter. Put my seal on it as the king because he can't open it. And in the letter is his death. His letter, this letter, I'm, I'm li literally giving him a letter that is going to have him killed. I'm giving him his own death letter to take to Joab and then Joab read it. Think about it. Think about it when, when, when Uriah gave it to Joab. Joab, you, you give me a letter. You give me the letter. I look in and say, what this is, man? Oh, he, hey, the king told me to give it to you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right, man. Let's call a meeting. Okay. Hey, uh, all right, Uriah. So, special word from the king. We want you on the front lines. We need you back in the war. Uriah, like, yeah, hell yeah. I'm ready to go back to war. You right? But the whole time, it was to set him up to be killed so the brother can have his wife. So when the baby born, nobody can't say nothing. They're going to say, well, her husband died in battle, and King David married her. Woo. David, David, mind gone right now. Lust is completely in him. Go ahead. Verse 16. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. Mm. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David. And Uriah the Hittite died also. You hear that? And Uriah the Hittite died also. Skip down to verse uh, just to, to get to the point. Uh, 26. Verse 26. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. She mourned. Oh, she crying now. Go ahead. And when the morning was past, David sent and fed her to his house. And she became his wife. Damn. And bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. So the Lord saw all this going down. This is, this is what happens, the lust of the eyes. When we allow the lust of the eyes, you, your whole life, the most high sent back looking like, he think he's going to get away with this. That's what happened. He, he thought he was going to get away with it. The Lord sent back watching like, David really think he's going to get away with this. I'm not letting him get away with this. Judgment coming behind this, right? This brother then got the brother's wife pregnant, committed adultery, got the bro lied to the brother. Got the brother drunk. He didn't get what he wanted. He couldn't hide his sin. So what'd he do? Oh, yeah. Let me get him killed. Got the brother killed. And used Joab to do it. And Joab was with it because the king gave him the commandment. Joab just did it. That's some evil right there. Right? That's some evil right there. And it all started with the lust of the eyes. He saw that beautiful woman on that roof. Bam! Then they had a baby together. Now watch this. Skip down to chapter 12. Let's read verse uh, 9. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9. Uh, let's read 7. Verse 7. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. Mm. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, mm. and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Then you had the heathen kill your brother. Ammon is the Japanese. 
You done let these Japanese folks damn kill your brother because you wanted his wife. Wow. Go ahead. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. You going to go through it. Read. Because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. Wow. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. Mm. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. Read. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also have put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. He said, the Lord going to forgive you, though. You ain't going to die. Go ahead. How be it? Because by this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. You hear that? It said, the child that is born of thee shall surely die. So David, the Lord said, yeah, I'm going to forgive you, but you're going to go through it, though. You're going to go through some hell. Why go through that? The Lord may have mercy on some of us the same way we may have done a lot. Of, well, he has had mercy. A lot of us done much evil. But I'm talking about even in his truth. Brother may fall and do some wickedness and the most high have mercy. But why would you try that thinking that the Lord going to have the same mercy on you? He might not have the same mercy on you. He might not beloved you like he beloved another spirit. Here it is. He loved David. But he may not love you and I the way he loved David. He might not give us the same type of, uh, of uh, mercy and grace. He might just cast us the way the first time we do it. Some people smoke weed the very first time and get addicted or, or do crack and get addicted or so, smoke cigarettes and get cancer. The first week they smoke, they, they smoke five days straight and that cancer develop. But you got some people that smoke for 40, 50 years and never get cancer. You understand? I remember when I was playing ball, one of my teammates, when I was playing in France, this dude smoked cigarettes before and after practice. I didn't understand it. And then to get out there and give you 50, I'm like, how do you? If I smoked them cigarettes, I would not be able to practice. I would not be able to play. My lungs would be congested. I would not be able to. But this dude was able to do it. And I said, he take that for granted. He, he think, in his mind, he think, oh, God gave him, since he got the mercy, and he's smoking these cigarettes, he's still able to go and play at a high level. In his mind, he thinking like, yeah, God must be okay with this. Same thing King David. Oh, shoot, he didn't kill me? Whew. But King David did eventually realize that, like, yo, the Lord is going to have judgment come on me. So what happened? Let's see, verse 15. Verse 15. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted, and went in, and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose, and went to him, to raise him up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. So when it says child, it doesn't say how old the child was, right? So this baby could have been a toddler, four, seven. It don't say how long, how, how long the Lord allowed the baby to grow or how old the baby got. Then the baby got stricken. The Lord struck the baby with an illness, and the baby died. And he fasting and praying while the baby's sick and in a coma, baby coughing up his lungs and COVID-19 type stuff, possibly. I don't know. And he watching his, his child die. And he fasting to the Lord. And the Lord said, nah, remember I told you I was going to bring up evil. The sword wasn't going to depart from your house. That first child, that, that child that was born from adultery, I'm going to kill that child. And you're going to have to bear with it, David. That's why when he said he stopped fasting, when he, when the, he felt out where the child was born, he was like, man, ain't no point of fasting no more. I fasted to see if the Lord going to do it. And I can go and eat now. I mean, because the child did. So David went through hell. Didn't remember his son Amnon um, slept with his daughter, um, Tamar. Then you got Absalom killed Amnon. Then Absalom laid with his daughters. Absalom tried to overthrow him. For 40 years, Absalom tried to overthrow him. So over King David's life, after he committed this sin, it was much evil that was pronounced against him. So watch this. Give me Psalms 19 and 12. And then we're going to read one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, Psalms chapter 51. But let's read Psalms 19 and 12 real quick. Psalms chapter 19, verse 12. 
Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be up upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. So it said, keep thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Presumptuous, presumptuous, presumptuous. That's that willful sin. That's that I know it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway sin. Right? I know I shouldn't be looking at this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's going to cause me to go further into my sin, further into my demons. This is what the Lord is telling us. Do not go after that thing. David said, oh, keep me back from presumptuous sins. Because that's what happened with King David. He went after this presumptuous sin. He followed after it. Read it again. Verse 13. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Let them not rule me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. So then I'm going to be upright, and I'll be innocent from the great transgression. Go to Psalms 51. Read verse 1. Psalms 51. Read verse 1. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. See that? Go ahead. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Read. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. So David began to recollect. He, he going through all this evil, and he like, Lord, please take this sin. This is what, read. Can you read the little um, note before that, before the actual chapter? Yes, sir. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. Nathan came unto him after he went into Bathsheba. We read, we just read that in chapter 12 when Nathan told him what was going to happen. Immediately after that, he wrote this psalm. In verse 1 again. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Read. Wash me thoroughly, therefore, thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. This is the mindset we got to have. Lord, wash me from my sin. Blot out my iniquities. Take this thing away from me. Be loving kindness to me. Don't let me fall into the lust of my eyes. Don't let me fall like my, my forefather, King David, and, and, I, and I have all these repercussions, all these evils happening unto me because I go after my lust. Go ahead. Verse 3, for I acknowledge my transgressions. Because I know this is evil. I know this thing is evil, Lord. I ask you to give me the strength to fight it every single day. Go ahead. And my sin is ever before me. And, and my sin is ever before me. How? It's evident. Why? Look at the evil that's happening to me in my life. Go ahead. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. When God judged, he just in his judgment because I sinned against him. We, we, the reason we reading this is for if we do fall into some type of wickedness, we had a spirit to repent and not to go full air fares into it. Because when I say wickedness, I mean your thoughts. Right? Oh, man, that's evil thoughts. Let me pray the Lord take this sin away from me, take this thought from me. Right, and even if God forbid any of any any of you brothers and sisters fall into any sin like adultery, you got to repent. Fornication, you got to repent. For those of you that may be watching, that may have been put out of the body because of adultery or fornication, you got to repent. You got to go to the Lord. You got to come just like David went. You understand? You got to battle that thing. You got to be sincere. You got to be sorrowful. You got to be remorseful. You have to be contrite. You got to ask the Lord to forgive you for this thing. Those of you that haven't done it, right? Go, you can still go to this chapter and see how David was, was remorseful after he did it so that you don't have these things happen to you so that evil don't come to your household like it came to David's household. This is all our prayer. We don't want, the, we don't want this evil to come upon us. Lord, please, let this not be me. Skip down to verse, um, keep reading. Verse 5, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. I was born in this, into this wicked world. Go ahead. Behold. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts. So God desires truth in the inward parts. The laws of God got to be on your mind. That's what the inward parts is, your brain. Go ahead. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. And in my mind, you give me wisdom to fight, my, to fight myself, to fight my sin. Go ahead. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Read. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Come on. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the, the, the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. The evil I'm going through, go ahead. Hide thy face from my sins. Forgive my, forget my sins, Lord, please. And blot out all mine iniquities. And blot out my past iniquities. And don't let me fall into no other sin moving forward, right? Especially any of this magnitude. Go ahead. 
Create in me a clean heart, oh God. And create in me a clean heart. Go ahead. And renew a right spirit within me. Because I wasn't right. I wasn't walking right. I fell into the lust of my eyes and the lust of my flesh. Lord, I ask you, take that from me. Strengthen me. You understand? Take, put a, a right spirit within me. I know a lot of y'all be wanting these deep classes. We ain't going over no deep classes. We got to go over this. This is what our brothers and sisters are falling. They falling because of adultery. They falling because of fornication. They falling because of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of this world. This is why we falling. And mighty men, good men, brothers that we, we love, is falling because of adultery, because of fornication. You understand? And having to be removed from our, our presence, being removed from the body. So we're trying to jump ahead of this thing. We're trying to constantly put these laws on our brains to help us in that evil day come. When we tempt it, when our lust is coming upon us and, and Satan trying to fall, get us to fall into it. This is what we ask the Lord for. Lord, creating me a right spirit, renewing me a right spirit. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the mindset to follow your commandment. Let me not fall into no evil. Read it again, verse 11. Verse 11, cast me not away from thy don't, presence. Don't take me away from your presence, Lord, read. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't take the Holy Spirit from me like you did King Saul. David knew what was at jeopardy. He said, man, the Lord took Saul out the way and raised me up. That same way the Lord can now take me out the way and raise another man up to sit on my throne. I can lose everything that I done gained because of this sin. Go ahead. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, mm. and uphold me with thy free spirit. Read. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. So when I'm restored in my Holy Spirit right now, I can teach brothers and sisters to not go after the same sin that I once fell into, because I've repented. I've changed. I can now be an example. I won't be a hypocrite. Right? Skip down to verse 17. Verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, mm. a broken and a contrite heart, O God, that will not despise. God will not despise a broken and a contrite heart. That's what we were going over earlier about if a brother or sister fall into sin that causes them to be put out of the body. God does not despise a contrite heart. If you're really sorrowful, if you're really ashamed, and you're not justifying your sin, and you're not saying, oh, well, it is what it is. I'm going to just keep on doing what I need to do. It is what it is. I ain't worried about it. No, you can't have that spirit. Your spirit got to be broken and contrite. Because when your spirit broken and contrite, God see, wow, he really, he really feel remorseful and sorrowful for sinning against me. He loved me. He fell. He, he, because give me that real quick. A just man fall. I think it's uh, Proverbs twenty four sixteen. He fell, and he not gonna stay there. He not gonna stay in that rut. He gonna be sorrowful for it. And he gonna pick himself up and he gonna repent. Read that for me. Proverbs chapter twenty four verse sixteen. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So the wicked just stay down. Oh, man, they done put me out. I guess it's my license to sin. Let me go and smoke my cigarettes now. Let me go and smoke my weed. Ain't nobody here to judge me. Ain't nobody here to correct me. Let me go and give me a couple nuts in. You know, let me have sex with a couple women. Let me have sex with a couple men. Now, it's all right. I'm out the body anyway. They already put me out anyway. You use that as a license to sin. You can't do that. If you get put out of the body because of your evil that you've done, you got to be remorseful. You got to be contrite. Like it says in, in Psalm 51, 17, the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit. You don't sacrifice animals no more. We don't have that to sacrifice anymore. Our sacrifice has to be that broken and that contrite spirit. The spirit to say, you know what? I sinned against the Most High. I'm remorseful. Lord, please don't take your spirit from me. Don't do me like you did Saul. Renew in me a right spirit. Give me a clean heart. Let me not fall to the lust of my eyes. All right? Job 31 and, uh, and 1, and it's my last scripture. Job chapter 31 and verse 1. Yes, sir. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Say you got to make a covenant with your eyes to not think upon a maid, to not think upon a, a, a man, sisters. It's for lust. You understand? To not just lust. Because that lust of the eyes will cause you to fall. I know I said last one. Uh, so, uh, Sirach 41 real quick. Sirach 41. Um, this is what I often meditate on. When the spirit of lust try to come upon me, I go to these same scriptures over and over and over and over and over. Right? Pray the, pray the most high, give me the spirit to apply them always. Sirach 41, read verse 17 for me. Sirach chapter 41, verse 17. Be ashamed of whoredom before father and mother. And of a lie before a prince and a mighty man. So it said, be ashamed. He's going to go into the things that you should be ashamed of. It said, be ashamed of whoredom before father and mother and of a lie before a prince 
and a mighty man. Skip down to verse uh, 20. Verse 20. And of silence before them that salute thee. So be ashamed not to salute a brother that shalom you. Go ahead. And to look upon an harlot. Be ashamed to look upon a whore, a harlot, watching those pornography, watching those videos, right, that you know will cause you to fall. It said, be ashamed to look upon a harlot. Go ahead. And turn away thy face from thy kinsman. Read. Or to take away a portion of a gift. Watch this. Or to gaze upon another man's wife. That's what Job said in uh, Job 31 and 1 about making a covenant with your eyes, right, that you um, think not upon a maid. Because once your eyes see him, then your thoughts, once your eyes see her, then your thoughts start to go into, well, I wonder what she looked like with no clothes on. You start imagining having sex with her, things of that nature. The Bible said, don't gaze upon another man's wife. Gaze means to stare. Don't do it. Watch this, Kiri. Or to be over busy with his maid. Don't be over busy with his maid, flirting with his maid. Go ahead. And come not near her bed. And don't come near her bed. Read. Or of upbraiding speeches before friends. And after thou has given, upbraid not. So he said, these are the things that he don't want, that the Lord is saying don't do because he know what it's going to lead to. It's going to lead to adultery. One more. I know I said one more. Sirach 9 and 9. Start at 8. Sirach 9 and 8. Say the same thing. These are all scriptures that you got to upload. This is for men and women. I know it was talking in the masculine form, but it's also going to you women too. Read. Sirach chapter 9, verse 8. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman, and look not upon another's beauty. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. For herewith, love is kindled as a fire. That's that lust of the eyes. It always go back to that. He said, I. It start here. It said, lust. It said, turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman, and look not upon another's beauty. For many have been deceived uh, by the beauty of a woman. For herewith, love is kindled as a fire. You start to lust after her. You start, I think I love her. Hey, no, you don't love her. You want that lust. Because once you get your rocks off, you're going to hate her. Just like uh, Amnon with Tamar, you're going to say, get out. You ain't in love with her. You just want what she got because lust has conceived. Because you're staring, gazing. Go ahead. Sit not at all with another man's wife, nor sit down with her at, in thine arms. And he said, don't be hugging on nobody else's wife. Read. And spend not thy money with her at the wine. Least thine heart incline unto her. And so through thy desire, thy fall into destruction. Well, I mean, I, I don't think it get no clearer than that. So, brothers and sisters, I pray you got something from the lesson today. The lust of the eyes. Continue to fight. It's a constant battle. Put on the whole arm of God. Let's fight this thing. Let's endure. It ain't just about lust in a sexual uh, sense. Bishop Kanai did an excellent class. Go back and watch it about covetousness this past Sabbath. How that spirit can come on you. The spirit of lust, preeminence, hatred, anger. All these things can come upon you. All those things we read about in Mark 7, all of them, not just lust, but we were dealing with King David's sin in particular. There's a lot of brothers and sisters falling into adultery and fornication. So we pray the Lord give us the strength to fight that thing, to fight those demons and follow these scriptures so we can have a chance at eternal life. So we can have our feet shod with the gospel of peace, right? And put, have the spirit of, what it say, I have the, um, the shield of faith that we may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked because we know we're coming. All right? So, with that said, being said, I'm Captain Gary Lights. Am I right? Officer Zariah. And we pray you got something from that, from that uh, class. Uh, with that, we say shalom, most high, and Christ bless. Got to make the world feel it. One body, one mind. Yeah. One mind, one spirit. Yeah. One spirit, one mind. Yeah. Got to make the world feel it. Yeah. One body, one mind. Yeah. One mind, one spirit. Yeah. One spirit, one mind. Yeah. Got to make the world feel it. Feel it. Feel it.